Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a Cube Conversation. Uh, really excited to have to the program a first-time guest and a user. Vinny Chabra is an IT engineer with Medallia. Vinny, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, to, to Vinny's left, we have Krishnan Badrina Ryanen, who's a director of product marketing with uh, Nutanix. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. It's good to us. be here. Okay, so we always love to be able to dig in with the customers, understand the challenges they're facing. Chris, let, let's set the table first. Uh, I'm very familiar with Nutanix. We go to all the Nutanix shows and the like, but for customers, what is Nutanix to them? Why, why do they turn to Nutanix? Okay, absolutely. So, I think it's a great time to be in IT. Uh, you see new businesses that are sprouting at all. Uh, the last 10 years or so, starting with Uber, Airbnb, specifically the ones we've really heard of, that have disrupted some really, really uh, big industries, right? So technology is making it happen. Uh, while IT teams are the ones that help make that happen and helps those CEOs disrupt, they're not in the best of positions to utilize uh, infrastructure they have today, right? the way it's set up, to be able to get more done, uh, be more agile, and truly serve the needs of the business and help create those competitive differentiation. Uh, which is why Nutanix is here, to help our partners within companies such as yourself mm -hmm. to be able to be those people, to lean in and help CEOs really achieve what they're trying to get done. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Yeah, we definitely see, uh, it used to be, okay, IT was a cost center. IT, you know, business would ask, ask for something and IT would often be the no or be really slow into the work with that. So, Finney, before we dig into the IT mm -hmm. piece of it, Tell us a little bit about Medallia, the business, what, 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 what's happening, what's sure. changing uh, there? Sure, Medallia's been around for about 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, we're located, in, we're headquartered in uh, San Mateo. We used to be in Palo Alto. Yeah. We moved last year, we have a brand new building right off 101 and 92. Uh, we are an uh, analytics company, yeah. and we there's a lot of, lots of fields in analytics. We specialize in an area called CX, which stands for customer experience. Yeah. And our goal is to make um, our customers, customers happy, which therefore makes our customers happy. And we specialize in uh, doing surveys, and then um, sp specialize in designing surveys for different uh, types of companies, and then um, and then we analyze that data from yeah. the surveys. Well, well, Vinny, I, I, I find there's very few companies that I talk to whose industries are stagnant or not changing much. The analytics space, a space that we cover heavily, uh, you know, here here on the Cube and uh, with, with our research, it's, boy, has that changed a lot. I mean, five years ago we were talking very much about big data. Today, you know, all the AI, ML, and uh, and things like that. What, what, give us a little bit about what, what's it like being in that business? You know, fast driving, you're Silicon Valley based. Um, I, I have to imagine that the, the business is going through a lot of changes that put stresses and strains on IT. No, definitely. So I've been in the IT industry for many years in the IT area, different big companies, um, Sun Microsystems, Juniper Networks, NetApp in the past. Um, Excite.com, which was a search engine way back when, <laughs> before I, I, Google days. <laughs> I, I remember Excite, uh, you know, because uh, Microsoft, uh, 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 didn't they buy that or things? But uh, there it was, was an early search there was engine. There was at-home, there was a partnership yeah. with at-home. Um, but yeah, it, it, Excite, I mean, people would confuse as to, wait, Excite.com, what kind of site was that? <laughs> it's like, no, 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 it's a search it's engine. A search engine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back before, by the way, audience, for those of you that haven't been around a while, it wasn't all just Bing and Google, uh, there were lots of predecessors <laughs> yeah. for that. So. Yeah, there was four or five big uh, search engines at that, uh, that time. Uh, so most of my companies I've been at, we've always been packaging stuff in a box and selling it. Um, in this, this is my first time at an analytics company, and it's a, it's a, like you said, it's a fast-moving field. Things are being, the thing, there's no development, staging type of production type of stuff. Things are just continuously being put in production. Changes are made, you know, customizing your, uh, cu you know, customers' applications and their interface. So it's it's a very fast-moving. All field, right, like and, you and, and Vinny, you say IT engineer is your job. What does that encompass? What's your role? How many people in the group? What, what, what do you sure, manage? sure, sure. So we have basically two IT groups. We have one that manages our production data centers, which are which our customers interface with, and then we have one that supports our engineers. So I'm part of that group, and it's kind of we're part of the IT systems engineering team, and that involves traditional IT tasks like backups, monitoring, um, application installs, new server installs, managing storage, networking, uh, basically keeping infrastructure and applications running as efficiently as possible. Mm -hmm and therefore keeping our engineers happy because they can do, get their work done and their development done. Okay, Chris, sounds like a, you know, pretty typical uh, from, from what I hear from companies is, is it, what, what are you hearing from customers structure-wise, uh, challenges they're facing? Absolutely, so uh, it's very much in line with what you were just talking about, where there's these multiple needs from the business and customer expectations. So how do you really help uh, IT organizations be able to keep up with those needs? 
Um, infrastructure needs to be uh, ubiquitous, uh, data needs to be ubiquitous, application services need to be ubiquitous, and you need to be able to scale out as your business needs, uh, needs to do so to be able to serve all those multiple requirements. So whether it's standardizing, internal uh, applications uh, that are delivered through virtual desktops or deploying databases or standing up customer websites, you need to be able to do that and respond as quickly as possible. And if you're spending cycles on acquiring infrastructure, deploying it, making sure it's well integrated, and then once it's up and running, figuring out what went wrong and uh, enjoying those multiple nights of uh, mm -hmm. pizza, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to figure out how to get this thing going uh, back to the way it was. It's, it just distracts you from what's important. So it's only when you make infrastructure invisible and truly scalable, very much cloud-like, and, and make it your own as a process uh, of doing so, can you truly be that business partner? And, uh, and I hope we've done that with you. Definitely. All right, so Vinny, let, let's go inside. Was there a specific project rollout that, you, that, that led towards Nutanix? Was there a pain point you were having? Uh, well, give us kind of the before and what was the main Sure, day? sure, sure. So traditionally in IT, you would, you want to set up a new application, a new inf in, um, your infrastructure environment. You would buy servers, uh, you would buy storage, you would buy HBA cards, which helps you connect the servers to the storage. You'd have things like worldwide numbers to worry about, getting the right cables, getting the right cards, and then you put it all together, you get all the stuff delivered, and then two weeks later you might have things working, and then but you're having some permission issues, security issues. So it, it was always a big challenge to get things up and running. So oh, it, was, it was the fun of IT, <laughs> is let's roll up our sleeves, <laughs> let's turn those geek knobs and you know, optimize everything. And yeah, within six months, I'm sure everything's rocking and rolling. Yeah, everything's rocking and rolling, <laughs> but you're still not quite confident that things are running. You're worried that a card might go bad. You're worried that a worldwide number might change somewhere or somebody might you know, mess up your security. So you would spend a lot of time just getting things up and running versus spending time on development and you know, working with your people you're supporting and trying to, try to enhance things versus just keeping things, uh, getting things up and running. So uh, Nutanix, you know, with a hyper-converged infrastructure, you know, we're, kind of, we're not worried about those things anymore. It has our storage needs, it has our compute needs, it has our memory needs. Okay. So what, was it a refresh working. cycle? What, what, what was the impetus that, that led to looking at a new architecture? Sure, sure. As we were growing, um, and uh, engineering base was growing, and IT was growing, and our requests, and uh, you know, what we needed to satisfy was you know, increasing tremendously. We, before we were working with just individual um, des like desktops or blade servers, yep. but each one was kind of working individually with its own storage, its own applications. Um, not, no sh things weren't being shared or anything, and we were just growing fast. So we needed some, uh, we needed a new infrastructure where we could actually um, have everything working if most efficiently and be secure and fast. And, and easy to manage, yeah. and so we did look at the, uh, we did some analysis on a few products, and Nutanix, um, you know, after some a few POCs, Nutanix was our product of choice. Yeah, I mean, you described something we heard a lot is it used to be every application you would kind of build your own temple for it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me build it, let me get the performance I need, let me optimize certain things, let me forecast how it's going to grow, but I get islands out there as mm -hmm. opposed to, I, I want to be able to scale. I don't want to have yeah, to yeah. worry about, uh, you know, here's one of the challenges out there, most people, and across the board, forecasting is <laughs> really hard or impossible. I either yeah. overestimated a bunch and then I bought stuff I didn't need, or I underestimated it and then, oh my gosh, I need to look to a new architecture. Yeah, and, and the change. things end up burning like at 10% of, you know, you're using 10% of, utilizing 10% of the resources that you're purchasing. Yeah, I remember because everything's 15, separate. 20 years ago, 10%, you were doing pretty good. Yeah, Before yeah. virtualization, it was yeah, like, yeah. you know, six, 7% is usually yeah, yeah. what we were running. Um, awesome, so challenges before, and we had you know silos out there. I, I, I couldn't share. I couldn't do. Um, talk about that that rollout. How did you get from that old environment to the new one? Uh, uh, th there's something I said when you you look at this wave of really a distributed architecture. In the old world, migrations were really really tough. Yeah. And you had to do it with every cycle. Hopefully, moving to an architecture like this, this is your last migration. It was like, you know, my wife always said, the last time we move, <laughs> that's the last time I never want to have to move. Well, IT, yeah. I'm sure, those migrations were always painful. Yeah, yeah. What was the experience so like my, getting to The it? migrations was, is one thing that we went through, but also just, now it's just setting up new VMs or new uh, applications, new servers. It's, you know, within a few minutes versus hours. As far as migration, uh, we, were, um, we were running a hypervisor before, but yeah. like I said, it was on individual servers. So the migration was 
basically picking your um, VMs or your servers one at a time and just migrating over to Nutanix once it was there and you know with um, the hypervisor tools that are, are available um, it's very easy to um, use like things like vMotion or uh, different types of migration tools that Nutanix offers with their uh, AHV hypervisor um, so it was just it was pretty seamless it was just you just pick and choose and um, identify your destination um, uh, host on Nutanix node or Nutanix cluster and all your stores that you want to uh, move it to and just go Okay, so, so Vinny, you went through a bit of a bake-off uh, to, to figure out the solution. Tell us, when, when you finish the deployment, uh, how are you measuring? What does success mean uh, to, to, to in deployment of your standpoint? And give us the after. What sure. what does this change to your business sure. process, your uh, organization? Sure. Qualitatively, success is when our engineers are smiling and not calling us too much and asking us to go to lunch versus uh, telling us about issues they're having. Yeah. So that's qualitatively. Quantitatively, um, looking at performance, uh, CPU memory, IOPS performance on the storage, how, how are applications responding, that's, that's how we measure it quantitatively. Yeah. Do, do, do you know like what kind of utilization you're getting on your current infrastructure then with the Nutanix? Um, well, so currently, you mean as far as... Uh, so you said you were lucky to get 10% in the old world. Do, do you measure that? In, in yeah, we measure world? that. Yeah, we, we, we kind of, um, you know, we have our, kind of have our um, choices of how much storage you want to use, how much CPU memory you want to allocate to each VM. And we, uh, we just monitor it, and through the Prism interface that Nutanix offers, the admin, you can actually see performance of each VM, and you can decide when to throttle things. So, um, yeah. but, but as far as, you know, how much we're utilizing, we're, you know, we, we, have it, we have it structured where we have room to grow. So, yeah, yeah and absolutely. Then, and if we do need to grow later, we can easily add nodes or, you know, chassis with nodes. And yeah, Krish, I, I think back to the early years of uh, you know what we call hyper-converged environments, and it was like, oh, well, they are monolithic blocks, even if they're small, and but you don't have flexibility there. When I look at you know many of the solutions, especially what Nutanix has, there's a lot of flexibility into how I can grow and scale and get the, uh, the, the utilization that I need, but get the performance, the ops, and everything. What, what are right. you seeing from your customers? How, how, how does that story play out today? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's all about empowering people, right? Uh, it's, it's about making making uh, IT people truly successful, broadening their skill set, giving them greater uh, control over the full stack, if you will, right? So it's no longer siloed across functions. You're no longer found helpless, relying on a different team to deliver upon something that was promised based on a certain SLA. So how do we do that? How do we make uh, evolve functional specialists into IT generalists who then become cloud engineers, true mm -hmm. cloud engineers, right? The world is changing, technology is adapting, businesses are craving for more. And the only way we can keep up is to adapt ourselves and utilize the best of breed technologies uh, that gives us that power. So uh, as a result, we hear that a lot, mm -hmm. where we find a lot of our customers progressing from being either uh, storage admins, network specialists, but most likely virtualization admins, who then become these cloud engineers, if you will. They reorganize that way. They tend to be in a position where they are managing a lot more infrastructure. You're talking about 100x of what they used to do prior in the in the earlier days, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so the the numbers, the ratios just grow immensely, as well as the quality of service provided. The SLAs are you know, far reduced as they used to be. So all of that goodness that uh, our customers are able to deliver to their stakeholders in the organization uh, makes us feel good about what we do. Yeah, right. Finny, would love uh, we, you talk about you know the, the engineers now. Uh, they're smiling and going out to lunch <laughs> rather than uh, you know uh, fighting bugs. Uh, anything or, or complaining about is you know yeah performance anything like uh, kind of when when you look at skill set. If, if is there th you know I, I, I've talked to some Nutanix customers like oh you know I had that security project that was sitting on my desk for two <laughs> years. I can finally tackle that. Or there's I can be more responsive to the business so that they don't uh, you know uh, I can engage with them rather than just going off running it and doing stealth IT. Uh, any, anything along those lines uh, that that you can share. I mean, one thing like you know, IT admins, we typically want to know everything, right? So we want to know what's happening behind the scenes. Um, with Nutanix, we don't have to as much, but we still like to, and so we we we, we take the opportunity to you know do trainings, go, learn what's happening in the interface, um, use support when needed. So um, as far as yeah, as far as skills go, I think it's um, you know the the skills you keep up with uh, is just different. Like uh, Chris mentioned, it's different. Different type of administration. Like you're managing virtualization, you're managing cloud. Yeah. You're not just managing 
LUNs and cables, you know, yeah. things like that. Uh, love you. It sounds like you've got a, a, a team that's got that intellectual curiosity and wants to understand what's going on. How was the how was the on ramp? How was the kind of the cycle to understand uh, the Nutanix piece? Uh, how did you? Yeah. Find so that? we learned a lot during the POC. Of course, that's when you kind of you know you can play around with stuff and break stuff and try to break stuff if you want. Uh, we, we use professional. We use some professional services to help us get set up originally. And after that, um, it was just kind of learning day to day and just improving, improving our knowledge in different areas. Like, so it, not a, we're not used to having everything in one, like in you know, in one kind of mm -hmm. a couple chassis, yeah. storage and uh, you know, compute. So that was a, a networking as well. So that was yeah. a little bit uh, not challenge technically, but just just you just had being to reset yeah. the mindset a reset little the bit mindset, as to yeah. the way I used to do things versus the the way uh, now I I can correct, do correct, things correct. <laughs> and and troubleshooting. Um, you know, the great thing is when we have troubleshooting, we're not calling three different vendors, like a, a, a networking company, a storage company, and a compute company, yeah. and having them point fingers, oh, it's networking. Now, we, if I ever have an issue or a question, I call Nutanix support, and it's, it's, they're very great. helpful. So, so, so Vinny, uh, how long has it been since the solution was deployed, the first one? Uh, it's been one? about two and a half years now. Awesome. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it would, first of all, I, I'd love your viewpoint as to how Nutanix has changed in those to those two years, and uh, along those lines too. Now that you look at things through the lens of 2018, um, if you could go back to peers of yours, um, what would you tell them now that you wish you had known back when you rolled this out a couple of years ago? I, I would, you know, I would tell them there's a much easier way to manage, you know, to deploy and manage your infrastructure, and um, you know, this is this is one of the Nutanix is definitely. Uh, something you should look at. All right, uh, Chris. What, what what advice do you give to the, the IT people of the world uh, that you know? I, I'm sure most of them heard about this, but you know, what misconceptions might they have? Uh, what, what what things do we want to make sure we we open the door for? Sure. Uh, so as a former developer myself, you know, yeah, several years ago, I think it's very easy for us to forget the role we play in our organizations. Uh, we're not uh, all about the applications. We're not all about the speeds and feeds. We are a critical core part of how businesses go to market and achieve success, right? So let us recognize that and um, use the best approaches that are available out there to be able to deliver that value, right? If it means uh, going with a good hyperconverged infrastructure solution, if it means uh, leaning in and building new disruptive technologies and such that can help your businesses do better. Uh, the other thing that I want to highlight is, just as you are in the, the, the customer service business, mm -hmm. I believe we are as well. Uh, we pride ourselves in our support. So if you have, if anyone has questions about how hyperconverged infrastructure can add value, call us, uh, give support a call. You uh, would be put in touch with anyone who can speak about all the value we deliver to our customers and begin to vet some of those ideas. All right. Vinny, uh, want to ask you, you, you've got some experience, you've worked for some of the uh, you know, really well-known companies, uh, you know, not only here in the Valley, but in tech in general. Uh, what's exciting you these days? What do you, what do you look at uh, either in the analytics space or in IT uh, that, that, that's getting you excited? For me, it's, I like to get up without stress. <laughs> and so ease of management, ease of uh, deployment in the IT area uh, is very, um, that, that's one of the things I look forward to, like you know, being able to do other stuff than just uh, focusing on uh, data, you know, routine stuff. Yeah, and, and along uh, those lines, if if I could give you, you know, the one wish uh, to, to to help make that goal even more, either from Nutanix or you know the the, the broad ecosystem out there, what what would what would make your job uh, even easier? Um, you know, it's it's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good answer, but uh, it's typically, you know, when. The, Issues once in a while we have application issues. It would just be some kind of uh, um, self-healing type things, you know, maybe, or maybe some automatic adjustments um, that could be done. That may be something in the future. Yeah, uh, uh, like uh, adjustments as far as resources allocated to different types of. Uh, yeah. All right, sources. Chris, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you have the the, the final word there because absolutely, once we simplify, uh, modernize the platform, modernizing the application, some it's definitely something I've heard from many of your customers as right. to, uh, you know that role of infrastructure really is to serve up and support those applications, and that seems to be where it's going. That's right, that's right. Uh, the the, li the our business partners, right? Partners in the business, CFO, whoever on the other side of the fence, they care about applications and services, not so much about all the blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. we put into the infrastructure. So uh, I think it's an opportunity for us to help us elevate beyond the infrastructure and focus on apps and services. 
along with making sure we have some of those self-feeding capabilities exactly. and such that take care of us and not require us to pay heat to all those infrastructure speeds and feeds. So it's a great opportunity to do that and um, you know be truly uh, strategic in the company. Yeah, I agree. Right. All right. Well, yeah. Krish, really appreciate you sharing the updates. Vinny, really appreciate you sharing you. your customer story. Uh, it's our purpose here at theCUBE to always help bring out the information. So make sure to check out thecube.net. If you actually go to the top, there's a search. We've got over five or 6,000 interviews we've done, including many customers, including many of Nutanix. Go in, search Nutanix, you'll find a plethora of, of content out there. If you ever have any questions for us, please reach out to us. Uh, see us at any of the shows or in between. Uh, so I'm Stu Miniman, and thanks again for watching theCUBE. Thank you.